Elvis gave you some things. That TCB that you're wearing, Elvis right. gave you. That's one. This was one of the first twelve, and it was this, these were made in California, and they have an incredible market value now that blows me away. You see one, you think you see in a mold, you don't see them. They they have a particular. Uh, the first twelve were very special. Very special, and you know, uh, I saw the other day uh, I, the guy. Uh, Y'all walked up to me that deals with these things, and he was alluding to the fact that it's incredible that I still have this because they bring so much money that I still have mine. And probably the other 11 have already been sold, most well, likely. Well, he, he gave me some indication, which I thought was almost vulgar, the prices, but I said, to me, I'm not going to sell anything that Elvis gave me because it means more to me than the money anybody. If it means that much to somebody else, that means that much to me. And my relationship, I have a son, a grandson, and the entire family uh, will enjoy the benefits of uh, the mystique of the things he gave me, the bracelets and the watches and, and all the other things we have. Uh, but we're taking care of them, the photographs and the signature of the programs and, and the memories uh, uh, that are recorded. And, and so that will go generations and generations and generations. Interestingly, my name, I'm a, I'm a junior. Then I have a third, a fourth, and a fifth. Wow. Same name. And I hope that that will transfer all the way down. That could be a hundred years from now. And uh, so we will work to keep all the Elvis Presley stuff alive uh, for many generations. And we're, my son, who's the third, has put together a, a, actually an incredible display of stuff that really? he's going to keep put together in his home. And so I have newspapers, I have all of the magazine articles and what have you from times past and interviews from the world media. But you know, Elvis, to me, is one of the greatest assets in this city. Not just because who he was, but of course how he felt about this city. How he Navigated this change in life, the honor, in an honorable way, uh, how he rose to such high fame, yet it all came back down to coming back to Memphis and enjoying his roots and, and, and never changing his attitude about the, being around the people that he liked. And, you know, he was never in a social setting, society, and that was not his game. He was never any member of any organization, social, civic organization. It was Elvis Presley and his world's uh, view of what, what he was. Uh, totally non-political, totally professional, except those times when he could share who he was with his family and his friends. Uh, and that was a pretty closed uh, society for him uh, because he, he, didn't, he didn't need to feel any threat about why people there. In today's society, you have to be very, very careful uh, because there's a pretty good chance that a lot of people want to get to know you because they want to be able to use you and for their own benefit. And uh, as Jack Soden and, and Priscilla and others have said many times, uh, I've, I've had as good a chance as anybody else to do a whole lot to use that. And that's why I have only a small amount of, I've been there every year to pay honor to him as a mayor since he died and all of that. And I've never tried to capitalize on it. So in this book of almost 400 pages, I only have 22 pages. And it's only to report some aspects of the relationship. And uh, uh, so to that end, that may be the one exception where I've benefited because I knew Elvis. If you know Elvis and you were a friend of Elvis, it's, you can't help but benefit just by the knowledge that you were and are continuing to be. And us as the fans, we want to know these things. So, so you know, it's I know you don't do it for money, but it requires money to, to write a book. You know, it requires time and all that kind of stuff. So I want I thank you on behalf of the fans because we want to know the history. You know, what you're doing right now for us is, is very, very important because these things are things that, that we want to document. And, and let's let's talk about your book for just yes, a moment. Sir. I'm going to show the book. I, yeah, and I might add about that book. That's a that's a real 
thick book and it has all the, the events of this city, the changes of governance. Uh, those were the most important things, uh, like civil rights and, and the sheriff and some assassination of the king. Uh, Elvis gave you a Mercedes. Yes, it did. Tell us about that. Was it a little two-door Mercedes? It was a, it was a four-door 280 SEL okay. Mercedes, 1970. What color? White? It, it was uh, maroon. Maroon. It was maroon, black interior. And we were at Grayson at, at Christmas time. And, uh, this was when Elvis was into the flashlight deal, you know, everything he had flashlights going around. We talked about that yesterday. Yeah. That's wedding apparel for Elvis. That's a wedding accessory. <laughs> That's crazy. He took that flashlight. Well, it might, might have been a club if he needed yeah, it. It was exactly. a big, long flashlight. <laughs> anyway, uh, we were, I, I was inside doing something in the house, and George Klein came in and said, Elvis wants to see you outside, and, and this, you know, late at night. And so I go outside in the flashlight, was looking in the trees and doing all that kind of stuff. And, and so, uh, so he fl put the flashlight on this car, had pulled up in front of Graceland. And he said, uh, how do you like my car? I said, man, that's neat, you know. Two years ago, Mercedes, and that's what I had it. He said, well, how do you like it? And I said, uh, I think it's great. He said, well, I hope you like it because it's your car. Now, interestingly, he said, Come on, get in the car. I'm show, I'll show you how to drive it. And so he opens the door, gets it on his side. I get in and flipped on the radio, and it was Elvis singing, I'll be home for Christmas. Wow. Now think about that. And so he just says, Let's, so we're going to take it for a ride. And uh, he said, I need some cigars, so why don't we drive over to the airport? And it was late at night, no cars hardly on the street. We drive over from the ramp, go into the gift shop, and he gets package of village of killed cigars. If you notice on the picture at the breakfast, there was a package of the village of killed cigars. Not Tipperillo, favorite talking about Tipperillo's all the time. He might have had some Tipperillo's, but for all the time I knew him, he had just a little small yellow tip village of killed uh, European cigars. Mm -hmm. like little, almost looked like cigarettes, they were so little. No, they yeah. were long. They were really long, but I'm saying very yeah, thin. Yeah, small. Yeah. And very good cigar. Yeah. I enjoyed them myself for a long time. But anyway, we got the cigars and made our trip back. And I was thinking all the way, man, I can't believe this. You know, this guy's giving me a car. Well, my wife, Andy, graduated from high school with him and they were buddies too, you know. So I, I always concluded that he, he probably was giving it to us as, as, as a couple and friends. But uh, anyhow, I had it. And uh, Naturally, in, in, in the political world, even though I was not in office at that time, sooner or later I ran for office again, and uh, it became an issue. Uh, so there are those who would say what they do not know, you know, about, and it felt like the devil gave me the car for some political reason, which was the goofiest thing in the world because he would never have even thought about that. He was giving George Clyde a car, he was giving me a car, he was giving everybody a house, a car, a bus, or something that was around him you know, with that small group. That just so happened I had a political connection, and so I had to take a lot of grief. And uh, But that's life. And you eventually uh, sold the car. I did sell the car. I sold it for market value, street value. And, uh, and today it would bring a million. <laughs> well, it sold the last time I have the papers that it was in my name, and I made copies of it. Uh, the last time I heard that it sold was like three fifty, four hundred thousand dollars. Wow, where's that car now? Do you know? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll have to look and see. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's somewhere I can it's, tell you that. Yeah. So, it's, so, Bill, it's probably safe to say if if um, you get, you knew us back then and you said, "Hey, come on, let me, I'll take you up there and introduce y'all to Elvis and Elvis like me and Star Guy." He probably give us a car too. <laughs> no. I doubt it. <laughs> not you. Not you. Hey, not not you, Troy. <laughs> Spy guy, at least though. Well, yeah. I, this has been great, and look, I, I thank you so much for taking the time. You are eighty-six years old. Yes. I next. hope I get around as good as you when I'm sixty-six <laughs> years old. Eighty-seven next month. Yeah. Wow. Next. You are. You're uh, fantastic, my friend. You really took good care of yourself, and Lord has blessed you. Well, I'm not, I, that was not intentional. I, I ran pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. If you know you were going to live this long, you took better care of yourself. <laughs> I, that's, I've been in this house 49 years. Wow. That is this incredible. Me and my wife, uh, 
we came here and we raised our children and and uh, grand and our grandchildren all know the place. So I've kept did it. Did Elvis ever come to this house? It, I'm sorry. Did Elvis ever come here? Yes, he did. So yeah. Elvis has been to your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elvis and Red and different ones that went here, but left from here, get here, gather here, go someplace or whatever. But the uh, and as a matter of fact, the uh, Sacred Service has been here with uh, Jimmy Carter's sons coming to visit. And we've had some. Uh, uh, pretty important people to visit here. But what is important about this house? It is my home. Ann and I both uh, we came like Elvis, you know, you see the house he was born in. Uh, that was upscale compared to some places I lived uh, over a period of time. And so when Ann and I got married, we decided we, we want to have our home. We ended up able to, to get a house and this home. And we made a home out of it because it's, it's, it's not just a brick and mortar. This is the place the memories were made, where our children have all their memories. And so, and I made it at a point when Ann was sick for 19 years plus, instead of her being in some rehab center somewhere, uh, I was so fortunate to be able to financially be able to keep her in this house and me to be stay with her every day and every night and use that kitchen and that dining room table to put uh, all my families together. and. Uh, um, so this has been a treasure for me. It's, it's not a beautiful home, it's a standard built house. Well, but, this is a beautiful place. But we, <laughs> but we had a tennis court, you know, we could play tennis and do things with the family and, and have our friends here and uh, cook a lot of great meals, a lot of great events. Uh, as recent as this week, the birthday of one of my children, uh, 63 years old, we all gathered, you know, to do our deal. and. Uh, I see people moving, so I'm going to downsize, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but no, or move, I'm going to Florida. I love Memphis. I love my house. I love my friends. I love my church. I love this place where my children know there is a place for them. Anytime, anytime, the door's always open. And so it becomes my richness. And I say in this book, and I say it repeatedly, how to live a rich life without riches, and I did. That's incredible. This is a class act right here, friends. This this gentleman was friends with Elvis, but he's also a humanitarian. He was a sheriff. He he did things. Nowadays, I think part of the thing you, know, you didn't really bring it out before, but part of it is is there's not people that have a conscience that are in some of these higher places that that it's important to them to do things right yes you know for you it was important it was a thing i'm sure it was a thing inside of you where you felt compelled to protect someone even though he hurt someone that was your job and you took it exactly. very seriously it's and you can't teach that friends that's something that is inside a person that comes from their upbringing and that kind of stuff so that really speaks highly of you and I am honored today to, to be you, here at your home. Uh, Thank you for I inviting us to your home. It I'm means delighted, a lot I'm to me. you here. Yes, sir. And, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what, whomever wants this book to read it and know that it's a long read. It's, it talks about a lot of the things we do to keep community strong. When I was mayor, moving around the world, selling Memphis to the rest of the world and many different countries, Russia included, Argentina, all over the world. But you know, uh, everywhere I went, uh, I had to talk about Elvis. Mm -hmm. And all those years after Elvis had died, he died in 77 and I became mayor in 78. And uh, so uh, Memphis, uh, Elvis, you know, whatever language, and uh, I always had something that I could show them about Elvis. And uh, it, it was really great. And he has been, I said over and over again, he has been very meaningful to this city. Uh, he's treated the city a whole lot better than the city treated him in the early days. That is true. And Elvis is worldwide, y'all. <laughs> that is a worldwide language that everybody knows. It you is. can say that name in any country, and they know what you're talking about. Exactly. Thank you so much, my friend. God Thank bless you, you today. Appreciate Thank you. It. Yes, appreciate sir. It. Buy his book, friends. <laughs> I'll yeah, put please. the thing up. <laughs> Help me lose less. <laughs> That's it. Are any of those the badge in that photograph? Well, that's... I bet you. I've got all those photographs from the Southern Athens. Photographs of Red. Because you were sheriff? You were mayor? 
Tell me, tell me more. I think it's right along about. Yeah. Is that it? Mm-hmm. That says Sheriff Shelby County. It's got your name on it. So oh. everybody had their name on their badge. I there. think so. Mm -hmm. And it says one right there. You see? Uno. That? Uno. That is super duper cool right there. See, I have a number of badges that uh, it, for different status, statuses along the way. Photo ID card, you know, and all that goes. So what does this have? Is it when you close it? Is it just black on the outside? New name. So it's got your ID card there. Like this. That is super duper cool, just like a like a billfold. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Okay. Let's pop it in there. A lot of those people have their badges. You get stopped on highway patrol. Oh, let me see about my yeah. license. <laughs> 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 uh, that is incredible. Yeah. All right, so friends, we have talked with our sheriff, mayor, Bill Morris. We've gotten some incredible stories from him. Elvis came here and spent time with Bill Morris. He said Red and Sonny and all the fellas had come here. And wow, what, what an incredible guy. I hope that I am getting around as good as he is when I'm 66, much less 86. So we're heading on to the next place. We tightened up and talked to Sheriff Bill Morris. Even talked to him about the JFK assassination. I mean, the MLK assassination, I should say. Amazing. Book, uh, Sheriff Morris. Uh, well, this book. Sheriff Mayor Humanitarian Bill and, Morris. And uh, I, I would I'd like to point out, this is going to be the a not, non, non-profit deal for me. I will lose money on every book I sold. I paid for printing it myself and having it written. And when all the number of books I had printed, uh, that will be all there will be. And all the money, whatever I get from them, uh, will be far way short of paying the cost that's going into it. But this is sort of a labor of love. My wife taught me at the beginning it because I would go back so far in history of what we were doing. Uh, Nobody else is around to tell it. So I will make loose money on this. I hope everybody who gets it understands that there's no profit in that for me or my family. And uh, and that's fine. And I will not print any more other than what we printed. Uh, it's limited edition. And it can be ordered at BillMarsBook.com. And if you would like, when you order it, I will sign it. I will personalize it. To your name if it's your liking. But when these are gone, they're going to be gone.